Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at some packing features in Ryzen Labs Unfold 3D Virtual Spaces 10. So I have my mesh loaded in. And to start with, we have our layout. So um, pack is going to uh, pack all the islands. Pack translate is going to pack everything, but it will keep its current orientation and scale. Um, Moving forward, we have the margin options. So, uh, you know, margin will be the uh, padding here, and then spacing will be the padding in between islands. So you can set this, and you can also set the map res. And if I change it to uh, 1024, you can see the spacing went down and the margin went down. I'm going to put it back to 2048. Um, you can also um, set the texel density for individual pieces. So if I set it here, it says 0 0.0029. Um, you could, you know, pick it from a different mesh and have the texel densities be different all around. You also have the quality of pack. Uh, gold gives a really nice pack, but it takes a while. Um, I'm going to use fast for this tutorial, but I'd recommend normal usually. Mutations is how many times it will try to pack until, um, and it will pick the optimal solution from those iterations. Uh, I found, you know, even one one works really well. Ten is great. I don't think I've ever used a thousand, and um, I probably don't see the reason to. I think a hundred would be great. Uh, groups pack all. It'll if you have groups made, it'll pack those groups, and then it'll pack everything else. Uh, auto fit what it will do is after you pack it will um, let's say this all packs um, in like a small box like this it'll scale it up uh, initial orientation I like this set to rotate off uh, what this is going to try to do is it's going to try to take all your islands and figure out whether to set them vertical or horizontal this can be great when you're in the early stages of unfolding however when you have a mesh and you have everything laid out how you want it uh, for example, this piece right here, when I do it, if I have it set to vertical or horizontal, it actually ends up rotating it a little off center. Um, and again, I've lined this up so that it does fit um, or it is oriented exactly how I want it. So I tend to turn this off, but what I do enable is this orientation optimization. And this is going to tell the program uh, at what angles it can rotate in order to find the best fit. If it's set to off, it's not going to rotate any of these pieces. If it's set to 45, 45 degrees. Um, this outline and group, you're probably not going to be using much, so I would just leave them set to default. Island groups is used to create groups. So um, let's say I go to my selection dialog here. I select the suppressors, or the suppressor group, select, and then I go to group. I can create a group with uh, create and so this creates a group and what this is going to do is it's going to pack it together uh, so that you have all these uh, islands near each other. This can be great if you're doing some hand painting or anything um, and just makes your UV islands cleaner. I know a lot of people are in substance painter, 3D coat, other 3D painting applications but having a good UV layout can be really nice in some cases if you know you have to paint some camos um, if you do end up doing some Photoshop afterwards. So I would say it's a good habit to try to pack uh, bigger areas of the meshes together. So I'm going to remove these islands for now. Uh, you can also select all the groups. Uh, display, I would keep these all enabled. Um, island visibility, uh, we talked about that earlier, if it's going to show or high islands. And uh, multi-tile, that's covered in another video. Um, for UV tile, if you want a uh, one by two or a two by one, you can set it like this. Um, what you can also do is you can do 0.5. So this will actually be a proper, um, this will look proper in my or 3ds Max. If you do it one and two, what it's going to do is when you bring it in, it's literally going to be two UV tiles uh, wide or tall. So definitely use that 0.5. So let's get into packing now. So with initial orientation set to off and orientation optimization set to 90, let's run a pack and we have the margin and spacing. So now it's given us a really nice pack based on our settings. 
is weird that um, these two are seem to be overlapped, but I believe these are just both the same mesh. Oh no, they're not. So there is a slight bug there. Otherwise, this is all been with our options. I wonder if I set it to a normal unpack if it will fix that. Now this pack looks great. Uh, it's a little sloppy, but everything is packed nicely. Um, looks like it's taking up a good amount of the UV space. So now going into a little bit more advanced features that I really love to use in this software. Let's go back and select our groups. Let's select this suppressor. And you see how this is kind of all over the place. So, you know, you have these two guys um, over here and then this suppressor is over here. Even if you are using a fill layer in Painter and you're using it by UV, um, that, that UV is going to be pretty broken up. So unless you've unwrapped everything in one piece, it, it's not going to be a great fill and you're going to have to use triplanar for everything. So what we can do is we can press G for group or create groups. I'm going to click this group um, and what I want to do is I want to select the islands um, by clicking the islands here and then uh, I can move this off to the side with space and middle mouse button um, so now that I have this here I can select the islands I can press pack and now that has packed this group together and again I'm not selecting the group I'm selecting the islands and pressing pack uh, now again, you know, I can go, I can rotate these around, um, I can move any of these pieces. So let's say this, I want this to go over here, um, and then I want to rotate this 90 degrees, okay, move this. And so what's going to happen is, as you unwrap, and to change the size of the box, use this. Um, as I pack next time, it's not going to pack this group, but it, what it will do is pack everything around this group. So if you don't have these uh, islands selected, it's not packing this group. Uh, one thing you can also do is, uh, right now it's a very square box. Let's say you have a lot of pieces that you want to be at a thin line. You can drag this right here. You can put it over here, click the islands, tap P again and you can see it uh, tried to line them up based on this bounding box. Unfortunately we do have this large piece so it can't do a great job. I'm going to undo that. So I'm just going to leave it like this. But let's run a pack really quick and see what happens. So now this is packed. Um, our orientation optimization is set to 90. So while it's not rotating the islands individually, it is rotating the group. Uh, there is a way around this. But as you can see, it's keeping the group together while it packs everything around it. And you know, of course, we can do this for another group if we want. Um, let's say we have this big piece here. Let's rotate this. Let's grab this piece. And what, what I'm doing is. Um, I'm imagining that we have a camo going on, or we have some VFX maybe panning across, and we don't have the performance budget for a second UV set. And you know, that's definitely a common thing, because second UV sets are uh, can be costly. So I'm grabbing these pieces, um, putting them into their rough position. Uh, obviously this can't fit inside there. Um, the UVs could be re-laid out. Um, 
but I'm just taking some pieces, putting them in the general location. So you see everything set up here. I can group these. And let's say that we need these to stay in this orientation because this lines up um, uh, the UVs line up, down, left, and right. And actually, yeah, yep, these UVs line up, down, left, and right, and that's something that we need for the pack. And if we have orientation optimization set to 90, that isn't going to work. So this G means global, so we're going to set this off on global. We, see, we don't mind if these rotate. Um, so we can select these islands, select these islands, or we can just select these islands. And I'm control click selecting the islands. So let's select these islands. Let's press control I and that selects the inverse and so we don't want these to rotate but we do want these all to rotate 90 degrees if needed so let me unselect everything let me run the pack again So as you can see, this group has rotated. The islands haven't rotated, but the group has rotated. Everything else has rotated to take um, to be to, to be optimized. And this group that we didn't want to rotate has not rotated. It has been moved, and this is this is a great layout. I could keep going. I could keep making more groups, and it would pack those together. Um, again, you know, you select the islands, and then you pack that individually. Um, if you don't have that selected, it's just going to pack in general and will not pack any of the islands together. So you can have your own custom island layout. You don't have to use the one it provides. You can lay out your own and then use that as a group that stays together, which is, which is really great. Now let's say that um, you lay your UVs out and this area right here, you know, you're making a gun. Uh, this is going to be first person gun. Uh, or you're making a character and you want the head to have more UV space. So let's select these islands and uh, let's bring them out of here a little bit. And let's rotate the, let's, uh, let's scale these up a bit. So, oh yeah, you know, we've scaled these up quite a bit. And so now what we can do is these islands are definitely a lot bigger than the rest. The initial scale we can keep. So now this initial scales. So the initial scale of all of this, let's look at the texel density of these. Uh, 0 0.052 or 0 0.0052. And these are 0 0.0079. These definitely have a lot more density. With initial scale on keep, we can pack. And what this should do is it should keep these islands bigger in relation to these. It won't be able to keep the texel density because this, you know, we just scaled it up and it's not all going to fit in the one to one. But what it will do is keep the relative scale and then auto fit it down because we have auto fit on. Uh, the other option you can do is you see this specified right here. Um, you can specify a texel density. So let's say you made um, another asset and it has a certain texel density and the other asset you're making also needs to have that density. Uh, texel density. You can specify a texel density, enter that in, and it will automatically scale the UV while packing to match that, which again, great feature. So as you can see, we have a lot more texel density here now, um, and the rest is the rest is good. Now, um, another uh, another uh, common pipeline problem that comes up is, hey, um, we have a character, the character head, the character arms. We want those to stay the same. We're making a skin on that character. We want to replace uh, all the armor, but we want to keep the texture work and the UVs that the uh, previous artist did. So let's say, uh, let's select these islands. Let's move them here. And let's say, you know, you have some awesome texture here. This is, pretend this is the face and we want to pack everything around these islands. What we can do is we can do, um, 
keep the initial scale, obviously, uh, but we don't have to. We can keep average, uh, follow average, but I'll just do keep average. What we want to do is uh, with this group, we want to lock this group and the islands. And so now this is all locked. What should happen is when I pack, it'll pack everything around this. If I have auto fit on, as you can see it says, uh, warning, if it's enabled, even the locked islands will be moved. So we don't want to use this. So uh, unfortunately, we can't take advantage of it auto fitting everything, but we can take advantage of the lock feature that this offers. So now you can see that this model, and I'm going uh, control shift Z to redo and control Z to undo, everything is packing around these locked islands. And I, uh, even though I wasn't able to use the auto fit, uh, it still is a great pack. Uh, the one issue you may run into is, uh, let me select these islands, let me select the inverse. And let's say you bring in some stuff and it's scaled up like this. Uh, what's going to happen is that uh, it's uh, keep it's uh, the initial scale. It's keeping the average of these. So if auto fit's not set, it might end up bursting a little outside of the one by one scale in the UV. So what you're going to have to do is again select these islands, uh, Control I, and then uh, scale down the islands uh, until it is fitting properly inside the zero to one space. So yeah, you can see um, right here, this is the end of the zero to one, it's outside. So again, in this case, you'd have to select these islands, control I, shift, um, and you can use the show tool um, if tap is not working, and then just scale these back down and then pack again, and it should work. I'm just gonna undo this because we did have a nice pack before. And uh, that's some pretty powerful features. Uh, you can always you know, go back to this, uh, unlock it if you need to move this around. Uh, but yeah, overall, uh, this is the main packing features I tend to use in Unfold 3D. Again, I find it a super powerful program. Uh, if you wanna see some UDIMs uh, and how those can be used, check that video. You can also use UDIMs uh, if you're making multiple meshes uh, that don't aren't actually using UDIMs, but are multiple parts of, let's say, like a mech or a robot, but aren't using UDIMs. You can always use that, set those up, pack everything together, and then move it back in your modeling package. Um, you know, I encourage you to experiment with everything to see what works for you. Uh, these are the options that I tend to use on a daily basis. Uh, I hope this helped, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment, and I'll try to make some quick tip videos that you can look at. Um, that are just short one minute things that cover anything I missed here. Thank you.